Hello, Back to Eden Film Gardeners. We're here at the Back to Eden Garden in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. This garden was first planted 10 years ago this growing season. When I moved the wood chips off in one area, I just took my finger and I began to dig. And in no time, I was down two inches really easily. And then in the yard, just just off the wood chips, I started to try to dig. And, and, and I was, you know, really stressing my finger to even break the grass, let alone break the soil. In the last 10 years, the soil that we've gained has just been incredible. Let's take a look at the soil. Now this has been 10 years and I just put a fresh coat of wood chips over the garden this year. But let's take a look at the soil under these chips. We get down through the four inches of wood chips and underneath we have rich black gold soil. Well, look at that. This stuff is loose. It's full of nutrients, composted wood chips, 10 years worth. But it's, it, th this is so fertile, it's growing everything. For the future, I mean, absolutely, the health benefits of eating what comes out of the garden is going to be uh, immeasurable. But also, I, I think that times aren't going to get easier. They're going to get harder. And I really feel like the Lord has released this now worldwide, uh, wood chip gardening, in order to be able to provide for people that don't have the ability to do traditional gardening, they don't have the equipment maybe, they don't have the space, they don't have the understanding of how to uh, do traditional gardening, and you can just lay down some wood chips this year, and if it turns out that it's 10 years down the road that you need to be able to grow your own food, that you need to be able to grow your own food, like in the days of the Great Depression, then your garden is ready. And I really, I really feel like that's a major aspect of the Lord releasing this at this time. He's, he's released it in uh, enough time for people to get things ready that they need to get ready. Don't have to be in a panic about it, but to be intentional about it and to do it. Now, 10 years ago, we had no idea that we would be finding ourselves in the midst of a, of a global coronavirus pandemic. So it would seem as though those that had started gardens would really be glad about that because now we know we can eat food that's not contaminated and the food is healthy. Now, over here, where I did not put wood chips, you can see what's growing. And the wood chips have been pretty thin right here in this area for years. But still, the soil is loose they come right out, the weeds come right out. And the same with this dandelion, comes right out. You see, root and all. One of the main problems that I've seen with a lot of people not having success with their garden as far as the weed control is they don't have their chips thick enough. You need at least two inches of chips to, to affect the weed control. Four inches is better. And you take a look here, no weeds, come over here, we have weeds that are still continuing to come up. Again, dandelion roots, I love seeing dandelion roots, that means they're not going to grow again. While we're here, I learned early through mistakes, made more mistakes here than anybody could imagine. Talk, talk about that a little bit later. But I put two inch chicken wire around the fence because as you look around, you can see we're out in, we're out in the country. And we have rabbits, we have woodchucks around here, they call them groundhogs. We have raccoons, <clears throat> possums. We have all kinds of things that like to get into the garden and eat our vegetables. Well, we don't want that. So I put two inch chicken wire, two feet high, all around the garden. And I actually watched rabbits jump 
both over and through the two inch chicken wire. So I ended up putting 36 inch high chicken wire, one inch openings. They can't get through that and they don't go over it. You can see the posts. Habitat for Humanity is building some homes in our neighborhood and they had to cut down some cedar trees. So I took those cedar trees and I cut them up and I split the trees and made posts. They're working great. Cedar is tremendous because it doesn't rot very quickly, which is to, something to keep in mind as far as the wood chips, because you really don't want to use a lot of cedar wood chips. You can use them sparingly, but cedar doesn't compost quickly and it releases a, a toxin. So it doesn't really grow things very well. Let's go inside and take a look. So after I put these wood chips on, I go through to plant and I'll make a trough like this. And basically it's just separating the wood chips away from the soil. And then you can take your seeds, you can put your seeds right in the trough and take that soil and just cover them over and that's as easy as can be. Again, I just love that rich, dark soil. Or if you're putting plants in, like we're going to do right here, these are pak choy plants that I started from home and I'd like to put some in here at the garden. Now, one of the things I like to do companion planting. Pak choy and other brassicas go well next to potatoes. They somehow seem to protect one another. So I'm gonna put some of these in and then show you some of this other stuff that I have here, what its uses are, what their uses are. So I just make a hole, put the plants in. You know how to do that. These plants will come along, put a little water on them. Once they're in, Oh, they're going to thrive in this soil. They're going to love being out here. My daughter eats a lot of stir fry, so she's going to really gobble these up in her stir fry. Now we'll get these in, and I'll show you what this pipe is behind me. There we go. Now, if you happen to have your plants in or your seedlings in, your seeds have come up and you have little seedling plants and you need more wood chips on your garden. This is what I came up with years ago. I take this, I cut a three inch PVC pipe right down the middle, ripped it right down the middle and you lay it over your plants and then you can take your wood chips and whether you use a fork or whether you use a, a rake or whatever you want to do, you can just bring the wood chips right over. Right over your plants, right over your pipe. Wiggle your pipe, pull it up and your plants will be protected. They're not covered with wood chips. They'll love this. And you have your weed control. You have your, your uh, it helps keep moisture in the soil. So that's what this is for. This apparatus over here actually was discovered quite by accident. I do contracting. I had a customer that wanted me to make a 100 foot slide going from his barn window to his swimming pool. He'd always joked about with his sons that they wanted to put a slide in from the barn to the swimming pool. I said, no way I can do that. Not something you can get in. He said, I don't care if you can't use it. I just want it to look like a slide. So I took half inch PVC pipe and I made these frames and I put them all together 
I used wire to hold them together in the same curve for all of them. And then I took a blue tarp and I cut it into strips and then attached the tarp to the pipe and put it up against the barn. Well, it did look like a slide, a hundred foot slide going to the pool. When the wind caught it, you better not be holding it. But I thought when I was finished with that, what do I do with these? And then I realized these would be great plant covers where you have bugs and you lay these down and you can put your bug fabric over this and they can't get at them and you can be bug free. I'd like to show you some tools, that, the three main tools that I use. One tool that I use the least is the good old shovel. The only time I really use a shovel is to plant potatoes because we plant potatoes deep and oftentimes we plant them in the fall for the next spring. And I like to plant them deep and I just put that shovel in, part the ground, drop the potato and we're good to go. I also will use the shovel if I have to dig a deep hole that I want to plant a tomato plant deep because so you can you can plant those roots really deep and plant up the stem and that stem will grow roots and sometimes I like to do that as well. The other tool that I use, a little more than a shovel perhaps, is a uh, mulch fork. Now, the only time I really use that is to spread wood chips on the garden. And then the, the main tool that I use is the garden rake. And this one is a wider head on it, which I really like. But this is good for everything from parting your chips to make trenches, to pulling out weeds, to just raking out the garden to be smooth. Now, I'd like to show you the wood chips that are surrounding me here. These are slightly composted. They have some composted soil beginning to happen. You can see some worms in there if you look close. That's good stuff. That'll actually, that'll actually grow things now. Behind me, we have some very fresh wood chips. They were put here last fall on this backside. And these are not composted at all. In fact, they're, they're pine wood chips. They're white pine. And a lot of people would say, well, white pine will, will destroy the soil. It really does not destroy the soil. And here to my left, we have wood chips that have been here for a whole lot of years. Look at that soil. Man, that'll grow anything. That's tremendous stuff right there. When planting a new garden, I will take some of this and put this down and maybe put some manure on top of it or under it and then put fresh wood chips over it. You have a ready-made garden, ready-made soil when you do that. Late last fall, I brought a friend of mine's tractor down and scooped up a bunch of chips and dropped them inside the fence at the garden. And then this spring, I spread them out. And uh, I took a break while doing that one day, sat on one of the piles uh, of the chips, and I just began reflecting over the last 10 years and reflecting about 10 years ago and the issues that I had. And it was so difficult to get anything to grow because I was trying to grow in the wood chips and not in the soil. And I, I was just kind of spending some time with the Lord with that and said, Lord, you must have really gotten a chuckle out of all the mistakes I made. And as clear as anything in my spirit, I heard the Lord's response to me. And his response was not one of laughing. Almost it was a thing of, I would never laugh at you. He said, I didn't laugh. I was so proud of you that you didn't give up. And I was really impressed with that. And I thought about that. And and isn't that the Lord's character? He would never laugh at us. He never would because he doesn't do that. But to be proud of us and to want to do things with us and be with us in the places where we're struggling. And when we are persistent and we don't give up, then God really likes to get involved in those places and he'll, he'll impart wisdom to us and through those mistakes. And he really did that. So I just... When I look at the last 10 years, I think, man, 
Here we put down chips 10 years ago as a covering. Under that covering now, we have tremendous fertile soil. I hope that in my life, I have allowed the Lord to do the same thing in my life that I could become fertile soil under his covering. The parallels are incredible, but if my life could reflect the fertileness of the soil and what it produces, I'd be overjoyed with that. And I think that is one of the things that the Lord just loves to do with us. He loves to have that fellowship with us. And he's all about the joy of the journey. And so I'm thankful for that. A scripture that has is really my life scripture is Matthew 11, 28. And when my wife and I met, I found it was her life scripture as well. And I actually grew up at an address of 1128. And uh, that says, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I'm gentle and humble in spirit. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. And that's what the Lord wants this to be. He wants us to walk with him. He wants to walk with us. If we are yoked with him, the burden is light. When we try to do these things of our own strength or of our own understanding, then it becomes burdensome. It becomes heavier. He will always lead us in success. And it's astounding to me the great joy that he has and he expresses to us and we share that joy when we walk with him, when we're together yoked with him. Well, here we are in the borough of Gettysburg at our home. Every year I put the lid on the cold frame and underneath we grow spinach and lettuces and uh, I'll show you what we have under here now. Here we have lettuce and spinach and beets that have wintered through. I have put some new plants in and they're, as you can see, they're doing really great. They like that warm temperature under there. But we've been eating these for a couple of months now, the spinach anyway. It looks like we really need to get eating more. But it's nice to have these things early in the spring. And this is one of, I want to show you one of the things that I custom made and I think it's really great because the, it's a tomato cage and a lot of the tomato cages that you buy at the store they're small and when the tomato plants get big and heavy laden with tomatoes they fall over in the wind you can stake them up but they're still not big enough to hold the tomato plants very well what this is is this is concrete remesh and it comes in uh, five foot by eight foot sections or five foot by ten foot sections and I simply cut it in half and after cutting it in half I bend it around and wire the ends together in the circular motion a cylinder and uh, you can put this in and then use a metal or wooden stake drive it in the ground and zip tie it or tie it with string and it'll, that'll withstand just about anything. And it does a great job of holding your tomatoes. We have, because it was such a mild winter this year, we had Swiss chard that actually made it through the winter. I decided to leave it in last fall and see what happened. Well, here's one plant here. There's a whole lot more over there and around the corner. But the Swiss chard wintered over. I did put some new seeds in and the seeds are coming up. Over here, we have some beet seeds that I planted, and the beets are just starting to pop up through the wood chips. These are carrots. The carrots have been in all winter, and uh, they've done quite well. The tops tend to die off in the wintertime, but then uh, when spring comes around, they begin to grow again, and they're tremendous carrots. Um, let me pull one out here. If I can get a hold of it down there. There's one. Now there's a winter carrot. Clean that off. That'll be real sweet. It's not real big yet, but uh, that'll be real sweet. And they are really sweet. I think the winter, colder months, helps them to be sweeter. 
Anyway, check a look. Check out this Swiss chart over here. I'm just amazed at how well this did through the winter. So we'll be eating Swiss chard now. But this is our little front yard garden plot. We have a mixture of vegetables and herb here and flowers. And over against the porch, we have more of the concrete remesh. And against this concrete remesh, we will grow whole beans in the summer when it gets warm enough in season. So the pole bean plants will wrap right around the porch. It makes like real cubby, real cozy little cubby area. And you can see down in here, right now there's a snap pea vines that are starting to come up. And they'll come up early. When they begin to die off, I'll plant the, uh, the, the pole beans. And we have, through spring and summer, we have we have vegetables growing right here. One year I grew uh, cucumbers here and the vines grew up the downspout. They went up on the roof and I actually had to go up on the roof to pick cucumbers. That's crazy. Let's go to the backyard. Take a look at the things in the backyard. Here we are in the backyard. And this year I expanded the size of the garden here in the back. And what I did is I took a layer of manure and I laid that down on top of the ground and then a layer of composted wood chips which is tremendous soil in itself and then I put four layers of newspaper. Now that four layers of newspaper is really important because if there are any weeds or seeds or roots in that composted material that you put down they will come right up through your wood chips depending on what kind of seed it is. And you can see here, the, the newspaper separates that composted material that may or may not have seed and weed in it and keeps it, it smothers it out. On top of the paper, I put some older wood chips and then some new ones. I just topped it off with new wood chips. But this paper is really easy, easy to rip through and uh, to plant your seeds or to put your plants in. And what we have back here is we have butter crunch lettuce. We have broccoli, kale. I put some pak choy in here, some spinach plants that are coming up from seed, lettuces that are coming up from seed, more pak choy, cabbage, more broccoli. And we have a, a stray asparagus coming up. Oh boy, we love asparagus. And that's about eight feet away from our asparagus bed. I don't know how that happens. But we also have our herbs over here, and uh, we have the t rosemary and, and onion and uh, cilantro, oregano. I buried pretty much most of the oregano, so I put a new plant in. And, of course, the onions are, are in this year, in the springtime. Now, behind me, you'll see a lot of firewood. We tend to be a little bit unusual here in the borough and we heat with fire we heat with wood and we had a neighbor that i was out here barbecuing some venison on the grill one night and she said boy you really are a displaced hillbilly and uh, i chuckled i thought yeah okay we'll accept that over here we have the asparagus and we seem to have asparagus before other people do in the area because here in town it's warmer and I think what's happening is that we have the sidewalk uh, on one side and then, uh, you know, the, the yard here on the other. And it's just warmer. The ground, the soil is warmer here. And so the asparagus is coming up. Our family loves asparagus. But each year I uh, put about four inches of manure over that asparagus uh, after I've cut the ferns down and uh, then top it off with a little bit of wood chips, and we're good to go. Next spring, it starts to come up again. So we're really looking forward to having this year's asparagus. Well, look at the size of this one. That's huge. 
So over the years, I know Paul has had a lot of people tour his garden in, in uh, Washington. And I've had a lot of people come to Gettysburg Garden and want to see the garden there. And they've had a lot of questions. So we'd like to offer this, that if you have questions, ask them. Email me. You can find my email address on the website or email the Back to Eden film. And we'll work at answering your questions over the course of the year. Thank you and have a good growing season.